What's going on, guys? Uh, welcome, everyone, to the first edition of our NFT Roundtable show here. Um, if you're not familiar with our NFT content, uh, first of all, what are you doing here? Second of all, I head over to Lucky Trader, and we write this uh, Roundtable article every single week, uh, usually on Wednesdays, possibly Thursdays sometimes, um, kind of just hitting on some of the broader topics in the space um, from our own perspectives. Um, you get plenty of news from Lucky Trader, but the reality is like the NFT space is a melting pot of different interests here. And while we pride ourselves on having that factual reporting, we all have these personal takes, uh, individual projects, major news. Um, so this roundtable is kind of here to chill, uh, let our hair down a little bit. You know, we're going to be like casual Friday. If you if you listen to uh, Tyler and I on the morning show, we always say that Fridays are casual Fridays. Um, this show is going to be a little bit more casual um, and just go over some of the tape takes, uh, have some fun. Um, and so, yeah. No financial advice. Uh, none of us know anything. In case of an investigation from a federal entity, uh, we don't know how we got here. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's introduce some of our uh, Lucky Trader uh, staff here. So if we want to just go around, uh, say a little bit about yourself um, and maybe how you first got into NFTs is always a great uh, intro story there. So uh, let's start with Tyler. Sure. I'm a Chicago guy. I've lived here for the past 15 years. I entered the NFT space early 2021. First big buy was Euler Beats, actually. I dabbled a little bit with NBA Top Shot, but Euler Beats was my first big buy over on ETH. I ended up taking a bath on it, lost like 75%, but it got me in the game, and I was hooked. I started following the big accounts like DC Investor, DZFi. I made up for some of those losses in Art Blocks spring and summer. Fully addicted to NFTs at that point. I ended up leaving my traditional finance consultant gig and went full-time into Web3 at that time. Have been building content and trading ever since, working with these guys over at Lucky Trader. On the NFT trading side, I'm mostly focused in art at this point, but I still love a good PFP and DGEN flip. So that's, a, that's my story and how I got here. That's awesome. Uh, how about you, Logan? Let's go over there. Yeah, uh, I've been here since early 2021, um, not quite trading as actively as Tyler and, and holding or selling things far too soon in many, many cases. Um, but yeah, just here actually reporting the news at Lucky Trader since August of 2021. I'm excited to do the show. And just for, for the audience there, uh, Logan lives in rural Pennsylvania and his internet, he, he was talking to us before the show about how fast his internet was today and it was like 40 megabytes per second. So he's still with those AOL uh, dial-up speeds over there. Uh, let's go over to Jason. I grew up in rural Pennsylvania, so I know how it is. Uh, but luckily, <laughs> I'm in Miami now and not in Pennsylvania. Um, yeah, so I've been with Lucky Trader since late 2021. Uh, first got into NFTs actually back in 2017. I own, still own, unfortunately, a few crypto kitties. Um, but then got uh, into NFTs more seriously when NBA Top Shot came around, like most people. Uh, bought a Series 1 Legendary from the top LeBron James block. Still own it to this day. Still own almost all my NFTs, and I wish I didn't. But I do, and I'm going to hold long term, and yeah. Well, I, I feel like we, we all have some NBA Top Shot bags that we're uh, disappointed about. Um, so, yeah, that's a, that's the four of us. Uh, I'm Ghost. I guess I haven't introduced myself. Um, I'm an NFT analyst over at Lucky Trader. Um, have been in crypto since 2017. Entered the uh, NFT space through N NBA Top Shot in January of 2021. Um, minted a bunch of Bored Apes and kind of changed my life there. Um, bought the house that I'm currently in now with a, a Bored Ape sale. Um, so just a, a wild journey for me and then ended up at Lucky Trader uh, in October of this year. So uh, I've been writing ever since. Um, so that's a little bit about us. Um, what, what you can expect from this show, uh, we already mentioned a little bit, but like probably 30 minutes, a little around the horn style commentary. Uh, we're usually going to hit on one big NFT topic that's like the pressing news of the week. And then uh, have some little fun. We have a, a game planned. I'm going to try to play a different game every single week. Um, we'll see how, how creative I can get there. 
Um, but yeah, so we'll break it up into a, a couple segments there. So without further ado, let's get to our first segment of the day, which is the news. <laughs> Just crushing the production value. Yet. So I, I, you're going to see a lot of corny stuff. I, I made all of these today, so they're they're pretty corny, but the, I think they uh, have some some humor value there. So uh, we're going to talk all about ordinals today. So ordinals have been all of the rage right now um, over on Bitcoin, and it kind of started as like an early novelty um, early in the year, and now it's kind of a full blown new paradigm here. So while the early action on price ordinals kind of revolved around the low numbered inscriptions. We're seeing new organic collections start over there and gain traction, um, in addition to a lot of ETH collections using that uh, Bitcoin angle as a selling point. Um, so the biggest news of the week so far was that Monday, Yuga Labs 12-fold generative auction uh, with the minimum bid coming in at 2.25 Bitcoin, which is 32 ETH or $50,000, and the top bid at 7.11 Bitcoin, which is 101 ETH. Just wild numbers here. Um, only six art blocks collections had higher floors than what this one came out at. And so this all kind of sets the table for our first question here. Um, I'm curious to hear from our, our panel over here. Did this price action surprise you? Did it come in higher or lower than expected? And uh, what do you think those implications are for like that that ecosystem? And I'll start off with uh, Tyler over there. I was surprised. S surprised it didn't go higher. I guess the Yuga whales couldn't figure out how to get their Bitcoin while it's set up in time for this thing. As I thought for sure we were going to see three or four Bitcoin minimum floor on this. I mean, this is Yuga dropping their first project on Bitcoin. It was huge. We've seen ordinal punks trading at a 4.5 Bitcoin floor. There was a point where there was an open offer on the ordinal punks at 4.5 that no one was taking. So I thought we were for sure going to see four or five Bitcoin floor on this one. So I was a little disappointed. Yeah, and I, I pulled up the, the Dune dashboard here just to give a little context on the ordinals, uh, how much they're surging right now. I mean, this, this is a look at uh, how many inscriptions over time we've got going. This is just a, a great chart right here going straight up. Um, and I, I, it feels like just yesterday we were talking about the first few collections kind of inscribed on there. And now all of a sudden we got 353,000. So people are not wasting any time there. Uh, Logan, have any thoughts there? Yeah, um, I thought prices seemed fine, um, like reasonable for expectation. Um, but the thing that, that stood out to me was just like the, the quality of the art and the conversation that surrounded the quality of the art. Um, a bunch of artists like Brian Brinkman and others, you know, pointed out that uh, it was fairly feasible to create that type of stuff in like five minutes. Um, and uh, it's just, yeah, it's wild that you could do so in five minutes and then generate like $110,000 like you did. Um, just for one, right? Just for one of the 288 that they sold. So I think prices were fair. Um, I think there's more conversation to be had about, you know, uh, and maybe more debate for a show like this about like the, you know, just the general cash grabbiness um, of, uh, of something like this. Yeah, and I found it interesting. Uh, I don't know if anyone saw uh, Kazomo de Medici's uh, tweet the other day. I guess the artist behind it kind of wanted this to kind of remain anonymous or he didn't want him, himself to be the focus, which I found really interesting because that seemed kind of like a, a point that people were really hammering like against Yuga being like they didn't promote the artist, they didn't do this. Um, but it seems like that might have been how they wanted it. Um, so curious there. Yeah, not not only has was the artist anonymous, the, the art itself was anonymous. Like, can, can we see these damn things? Like, when are we going to be able to see the, the 288 or, or 300 uh, items in the 12-old collection? I mean, these buyers paid $50,000, sight unseen. They don't even know what they bought. It is fairly absurd when you think about it from that way. And, and don't compare this to art blocks. Right. Everyone's kind of I'm seeing that comparison out there. Oh, you know, people meant, you know, our drop our blocks generative collections off just that one image. But you can see the sample outputs. We never really saw the sample outputs for this one. So uh, I, I do have a problem with that, Yuga. Yeah. I have we are they even distributed them yet? Or are we still waiting to see more about that art? Or I, I know we've seen the the intro one here. I'm pulling up the uh sharing the uh, blog from Yuga here and I, I see a bunch of them up there. We also saw the the fake collection that people said was generated from the same seed, I guess. Um, so they kind of got front run a little bit there, which was interesting. Um, there's some of the arts, the art pieces up there, I guess, or examples of it. If you are watching on video here, um, Jason, any thoughts on this? 
Yeah, so I guess I'll be the one to do the first hot take of the episode. No one actually cares what these things look like. Um, no one cares what board apes look like. They're ugly. Uh, no one cares what this art looks like. If it's ugly, if it's not, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters here is that uh, Yuga Labs put out a low supply collection that feels even more exclusive than board apes are. And so that's why I think that these probably sold too low, and then I think they'll probably be higher in the future. I, I completely agree. I mean, I think people want a taste of that first Yuga, the bite of the Yuga apple on, on uh, Bitcoin there, and it doesn't really matter. They could have put literally anything out. Um, what does this mean for, for the broader Bitcoin ecosystem, though? Do you think that more people are going to want to mint stuff on Bitcoin or we're going to see more people wanting to move over there? Um, I, I saw a lot of commentary about, uh, I think Tropo Farmer was saying that it is a great medium for low supply gen art collections which i found interesting over like a pfp um so curious if anyone has any thoughts on that yeah i i was fading the bitcoin nft scene for a moment but uh i'm now on board this this feels like a movement to me no longer a fad and i think yuga did cement that relevancy for me and you know as soon as we see some real collection and some real infrastructure being built over on Bitcoin, I think we will start to see more, more demand, more of a bull run going on over there. I mean, I, I aped hard into Canto NFTs a, a few weeks back, um, which I already regret, regret quite a bit. That was a fad. I don't think the Bitcoin NFT scene right now is a fad. I do think it's going to have some staying power. And what's interesting to me, probably the most about this trend is it does unlock a new buyer pool. You know, we talk about this in the ETH NFT market all the time. There's no new walls coming in, right? Everyone just rushes to put that in our face every day of this bear market. Well, guess what? There are plenty of Bitcoin whales over, over on Bitcoin who are just holding their, their coins. And I think a percent of them will likely want to gamble on some JPEGs if they've got some good options to do so. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I know a lot of people have been talking about how Bitcoiners kind of just tend to hold their Bitcoin and store it away. And so this is finally kind of unlocking that utility that they've never had because it's literally just kind of like that digital gold. Um, there hasn't been a real use case to use it for until now. Um, so interesting perspective there. Um, I want to get some price predictions for uh, for 12-fold. Like what are, what are we looking at this in one year, I guess? I know a lot of that probably depends on on where ordinals go, um, but let's uh, let's go, uh, Jason. What do you what do you think the price prediction uh, is for a year from now? So, assuming that the market conditions are semi similar slash getting a little bit better, I think these probably double in about a year. I think it will be very low liquidity, like Tyler mentioned in the article that we wrote earlier. Um, there just won't be that many buyers for these, but the buyers who do want them really want them. And the buyers who have them currently don't want to sell them. So I really don't see the floor price going down over the next few years. These people are already rich. Like they're, they're spending $50,000 on art they haven't seen just because Yuga Labs name is on it. They're not going to sell it in the next 12 months. And so, yeah, I think we probably see double. And if you really want these things, we could see some pretty ridiculous sales that probably aren't well advised. But um, yeah. So we're, we're doubling from 2.25 is the floor right now, I guess, before there's any secondary sales. So that's looking at 32 ETH. You're calling 64 ETH next year. Plus, ETH might go up. And so we're, we're looking at quite the investment there, potentially. Uh, Logan, what are your thoughts? I think it's going to be way higher, probably. Um, I, I think like people don't want to risk trading them. Like That's a huge risk right now, right? Is like accidentally inscribing over or you know like some of the technical stuff i'm not aware of um we do have a, a guide in lucky trader but i think it's really going to take a lot for people to move these it's it's always great when you have a, a huge asset that you are scared of moving out of a wallet because it might just disappear so uh tough times over there tyler will, what, what, that, just or, go ahead. real quick that will get better over time though it's actually one of the most bullish things about bitcoin nfts is that this is happening with zero infrastructure the infrastructure over the course of the next year should get significantly better as you know, more people are working on this. If there actually is money to be had here and it isn't just one flash in the pan, uh, by the end of this year, it should be rather easy to trade Bitcoin NFTs. And if that's the case, then 2x the floor might be too low uh, for a prediction for this set. I think what I'm, <clears throat> my hot take is 
that the seven seven point one Bitcoin top bid is going to just get blown out of the water. I, I think that the most expensive sale that we'll see one year from today might be like twenty Bitcoin. You know, it's going to be in line, likely with the some of the highest Fidenza sales that we've seen, um, just for the pure flex. Um, so I, I do think we will see that, especially when folks are a little bit more comfortable trading and, and moving around on Bitcoin than they are right now. That's just wild to think about, and I, I also think that it's crazy that uh, these people are paying for this sight unseen. Number one, but number two, if you're paying the higher options of the collection. Those people paid, but you don't know what those outputs are. So you're basically playing the serial lottery, I guess, which we've seen in Top Shot. Really, besides number one and Jersey serials, which we don't we don't have any jerseys here, um, don't really matter that much. So like, what are those are those top ones going to matter? Do you think that the is it going to be top fifty or is it just going to be the people that got number three? If that one's just not aesthetically pleasing, are you just like shit out of luck there, or you just got to hope you get the black and white one? <laughs> Those are the, always the ones that, that run in our blocks. So uh, look out for whoever got lucky and got that. But yeah, I don't know that serial one is necessarily going to matter that much. It'll be like the rarest outputs if there is rarity or the ones that look the best probably. I yeah, I, I agree. I, I think it'll be the ones that look the coolest or the ones that look the most unique. And that I, I just don't, under, I've never understood serial. I don't really understand it on top shot. I understand low serial moments is that you can't get another one, but I number one versus number 10. I just, I don't think that it matters. Yeah, I, I agree. I think 69 will hold some value. I, th I do think one will hold some value just because it's the first one in the collection. Um, probably outside of that, you're going to be looking for the rare ones, but I mean, does do Bitcoin collections even have those, those rarity values yet? Are they, we don't even know if there's going to be traits on it that are going to make it more rare. Is it just going to be what your eye thinks is rare? I don't know. Um, it's gonna be wild to watch. So, uh, well, well, we can move on to our second segment here. We're gonna we're gonna play a little game here, but I've got another corny little. All right, that's some big Mario Party vibes right there from that song. Um, we're playing NFT fortune teller today, so uh, we already did a couple predictions here, but uh, I've. We're going to play a little game called NFT Fortune Teller. It sounds fancy. Maybe it doesn't. Um, it's not that deep. We're going to guess the future. So uh, our first question here, and I want to give a hat tip to uh, bag holding NFTs on Twitter because I saw this, this post a couple of days ago and I uh, kind of got the wheels turning on this segment. Um, so I want you guys to look into your crystal ball here and predict which of the following projects in the same general price tier range here uh, currently will be the highest in one year. And, and the reasoning for the champion or maybe a, a compelling reason for the losers here. So the first uh, question tier we have here is uh, from the mid tiers here. So we've got Pudgy Penguins at a 5.5 ETH floor right now, Doodles at 5.1, Clone X at 4.5, and Meme Land Captains at 5.2. And I can get those on the screen here. Let me see if I can find that. It's going to cover up Logan, but that's okay. <laughs> so let's start with uh, Tyler here. Uh, I want some predictions. Which one do you think in one year are we seeing with the top floor price here and why? Uh, and I'm happy Logan is covered because I don't need to see his reactions for this one. It's the Pudgy Penguin, and it's, and it's not even close. I mean, these things are Lindy at this point. They they went to zero. They almost literally went to zero. Luke and Nets enters the scene. He saves them. He's got an incredible universal approval rating at this point in time, a diehard fan base, and they've got the least execution risk of any of the mid-tier PFPs. So the, the pudgies are, are the easy choice here for me. Logan, how about you? What, what's your reaction to that? Um, it makes sense. I, I think it's meme lander pudgies. Uh, and I actually agree with everything Tyler said. I think they do have the least execution risk. And I think that's perhaps the most notable point of, of everything that you could possibly say about this collection. Um, meme land is just, it's really interesting. Like there's a, there's a rabidity Rabidity about a little bourbon, a, a rabid fan base, right? Um, <laughs> with this meme land ecosystem, and they are doing unique things. Um, and the thing about doing unique things is that that means there are more unique announcements coming, and more announcements means more speculation and more anticipation, and that's what drives floor price. Um, and while pudgies, you know, like may have the least amount of execution risk and some stability in the floor there. You don't keep going up without more announcements. 
And, and so that's where I think meme land could, you know, could enter in. I took away the screen. I'm going to put it back here. So it's not, it was covering your face during the speech there. And I also want to actually, I'm going to take it back down. Cause I want Logan's take here. We know that you love your clay projects. I, I want you to talk briefly about how you're feeling about doodles right now. I, I know you saw, sold your, your main doodle recently, I believe. Um, so, so give us a, a pulse check there on the, the digital ecosystem. Uh, it's breathing, um, maybe barely breathing for a while. Uh, I think the doodle map was like a huge flop. I don't know why they, they forced that out there. The visual representation just to make people feel like they're doing stuff. Like we know they're doing stuff. Um, I don't know. They've just been really bad in my opinion. They've been really bad at like leaning into web three. And I know that seems like super cliche, but meme land, pudgies like they've just they've run with the mimetic stuff that has made web3 like what it is um and i know i'm not i'm not like that person right but um the bulk of the demographic is and i just think doodles has, has done a really poor job of, of leaning into that um so barely breathing uh certainly tons of potential in my opinion still um but i'd put them well below above clone x but well below those other two man doodles broke the clay heart of Logan here. Kind of Do you consider Doodles a clay project? It's Don't not, you? It's not clay. It's or I, it's a, it's a it's in the clay theme that you like. I feel like. What, what would you call that? Where, where there's the pastel, the pastel colors. I mean, that's what really gets me. But um, it's clay adjacent. I'd say, yeah, maybe clay. Clay. Uh, how, clay. how did the toy? Or digital socks get you, Logan? Were you were you buying up some some of the pink socks over on on Goya when those came out? I have not. Um, I duplicated my doodle and then sold it because um, I wanted access to doodles too. I want to be able to customize my own doodle. I love the IP, uh, but I have not done any trading of doodles to wearables. I, I don't really care. Man, all right, Jason, your thoughts. Well, I'm glad that uh, I didn't have to revoke Tyler's pudgy card. It is Pudgies, and it's not close. Uh, by the end of the year, if Pudgies isn't over 10 ETH, I'd be shocked. Uh, I can't say that for any of these other projects. I will say that Logan, I think, is correct that Meme Land Captains probably has the second highest upside. Um, they could see something similar to Pudgies, though. I mean, I don't see how any of these projects execute as well as Pudgies do. They're spacing out their announcements properly. They're doing everything right. Luca Neck Nets is a god. And uh, yeah, I think uh, it's a race to the bottom for Doodles and Clone X. That'll be more interesting than Pudgy's blowing everyone out, else out of the water. I, I tend to agree personally that uh, it's probably between Meme Land and Pudgy's here. I'm curious to hear from Tyler or Jason here on on what you think is the next revenue driver for Pudgy's to make that next leg up. I, I hope there's no new revenue drivers. I don't. I don't want any type of roadmap. I, I wouldn't care if they they just shipped off the, the rogs and, and the whole game plan for those entirely to me the bull case for the penguins is that they are an art project at this point in time they are the, the next crypto punks people like the pudgies for the art they like repping them as their pfp not because of what's coming in two weeks or two months it's because they genuinely like them and, and what they stand for so uh, I, I don't need another revenue stream i i did love the um I've seen on Twitter circulating recently how the the gifts of pudgy penguins are being used by like people like normies and they don't realize that it's an NFT project at all. They just like the the art and they just use it in, in Giphy or whatever, which is a, a cool real world use case there. It's the, the uh, Trojan horse or the pudgy horse, so, so to speak. Yeah. And I, I will have full transparency. I did buy a second captain recently. I am I'm bullish on the meme line ecosystem. Um, they bought my trippy hat ape, I, which I am desperately trying to get back from them via a raffle. I'm manifesting it. Um, for those of you who have been following me for the last couple of years, I had a, a trippy hat board ape for a long time as my profile picture, sold it about two months ago, and then Meme Land ended up buying it from the person who bought it from me. Um, and there's rumors that they might be putting that in the uh, potential raffles or auctions or whatever, or not auctions, um, as prizes for staking um, alongside ApeCoin. So very interesting dynamics there. Uh, yeah, I, I have to say, Ghost, really, really quickly, I, I'm still quite angry about your decision to, to go captains over pudgies. I, I was helping you shop for, for pudgies. I know <laughs> that you had your finger on the buy button, and then you pulled it off. Um, and, and I have to admit that 
th- that hurt our relationship a little bit. And I, I'm still trying to, to figure out how we get past that. I, I did leave you dangling on the pudgy by a little bit. I was, I was, I had my foot in the door and then uh, Meme announced like the, the ape coin potential for the, the staking. And I was like, man, I need another one of those. I saw the price going up a little bit. I got some FOMO. So I had, I had to grab a second one. You never want to be left with one of something that you're bullish on because I always like never want to sell it. And that's how you round trip stuff. Um, so I had to get a second one there, but the pudgy might still come in the future. I, I'm not ruling out uh, a pudgy. I just um, want to say real quick about pudgies. Um, I agree mostly with Tyler, but I think if they had to do something in the future and they already are doing licensing deals with toy companies, I think it's toys and cartoons. Um, utilizing, I mean, obviously everyone loves the pudgies. Um, they use them in gifts all the time. And so, you know, why not a ne- Netflix show? So are, are you bullish on on IP like that uh, going into the mainstream? Because I feel like that's one of Doodle's kind of main things that they continually push and it doesn't seem to be as big of a driver for them. So I'm curious yeah. to see how the pudgies like change that. That's uh, mainly because Doodles is lame. I actually, this is my <laughs> main reason that I like Cool Cats, but they have obviously failed. And the new brand direction for Cool Cats is great. Um, but Pudgies basically did what Cool Cats should have done a long time ago. Uh, do Pudgies have any bad traits? Like Doodles has the cigarette, which is not necessarily family friendly. Um, Pudgies is pretty clean across the board, right? There's no bad Pudgies. Like either. really marketable. All the pangus, all the pangus. There, there really isn't that. Uh, like, you can look at board apes, and everybody knows like the crazy eyes are the ones that nobody wants, or the service apes. Like most collections, there's a clear floor. And I, when I was shopping for pudgies, I was looking at the floor, um, and they were all pretty great. So it's a, a very strong collection, top to bottom. There. Um, going to move on to a the second question, which is going to be in the same vein here of NFT fortune teller. Um, same same question. Which of these projects will have the highest floor one year from today? We're doing one ETH wonders now, though. So these guys are all hovering around that one ETH mark. Some of them have broken a little bit. We've seen a, a few of them break it and then go retrace a little bit. Um, so curious to hear your thoughts on these. So we've got Valhalla as number one. They're at a 1.05 ETH floor. Renga at a 1.2 ETH floor. Sappy Seals at 0.95. And Beans at 1.3. So I will put that little graphic up there on Logan again. Let's start with, uh, let's start with Jason this time. Yeah. So I don't know too much about these projects. So I'm just going based on my general ideas for the NFT market moving forward in 2023 and 2024. Uh, Valhalla seems like it's sort of a community slash streetwear kind of deal. Um, Ranga is storytelling through and through. Savvy Seal seems like it's a standard PFP project with a bit of metaverse sprinkled in. And then, of course, Beans attached to Azuki. Um, I don't like projects that are attached to other projects and lower priced, except for Mutants. Uh, cool Cat showed that those can go south very quickly if there's not enough demand for the original project. I don't like low cat PFP projects. And so it comes down between Valhalla and Renga for me. And I think that storytelling wins in 2023, 2024. So I'm going with Renga. Yeah, I like that. Um, I, I think Ringa has some of the best art out there. I mean, the and I love their kind of the way that they're revealing their roadmap almost um, is just through comic book style storytelling. Like there's not really any text on any of the tweets. It's just like straight comic book, which I think is a really cool, unique way to do stuff. And it's not really copying any other projects. They're kind of paving their own way there. So kind of interesting. Uh, Tyler, what are, what are you thinking? Yeah, it came down to Beans versus Valhalla for me. Um, and as much as I like the Azuki ecosystem, I, I can't go with a secondary collection over a primary. So I'm going with Valhalla. They've got a rabid fan base. They've also got low key, some really sharp whales who have been accumulating that project. And I think with the right announcement, that one can absolutely full, uh, do a nice little send to the two or three ETH range. So I'm going to, I'm going to put my, my bet on Valhalla there. Do you know more about their like gaming element? Because I know that I feel like a lot of their um, mission has kind of been to drive that that professional gaming type thing. I think they're trying to put together a team for that. Um, curious to know if you if you know more about that because I'm not super familiar with Valhalla yeah. either. Like the Web three version of Twitch, you know, I, I'm not super bullish on that. I know that is why they got a big chunk of their funding, and so they should have some runway. 
But I think for, for most of, of the folks who I've talked to who identify with that project, it's been more so because of the art and the community uh, over the Web3 Twitch. So I, I think that's why they're vibing with it, but, but we'll see. And that is definitely an execution risk for that project. And Sappy Seals are kind of, I feel like Pudgy Penguin's like a cousin there. I feel like they are pretty friendly with uh, with that community over there. So I don't know, I don't know how you feel about that or it feels kind of like a diss there. Not not cute enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was well, I was gonna chime in. I'm I'm very um very surprised that neither Tyler nor Jason picked Sappy Seals because that's the exact thing I was thinking goes was that they are, you know, they're the pudgy penguin pudgy penguin equivalent in that group. Uh personally I would pick Renga of the of that group. I think it does the does the art well. It does the intrigue well, which is necessary in the space, right? Um, and, and it has a, a unique element through the storytelling, which separates it. Not unique, right? Because there are other projects doing it, but separates it from that particular group. So I'd say Renga. I think I'm going to agree with Logan. I think I would I would pick Renga here. Um, like Jason said, I think Beans. I think beans are great. Like, I think they've done a good job making a very different secondary collection there. Um, and the way that they're using that IP is kind of similar to how pudgies are doing it, where I feel like they're posting a lot of content that is not even NFT focused and they're just kind of making an, an IP out of it, which is cool. Um, but I think Renga is probably the most unique of the bunch. And I, I really resonate with that art. And it seems like a lot of other big whales do too. Um, so I think I would go, go Renga there. Um, yeah. So that's about it. Um, that, we're doing two segments, um, but that wraps it up. I want to close out the show, though, with a little 30-second, um, kind of around the horn style, you know, at the end, the final person who wins. We're all winners here, though. The final person that wins gets a little 30-second segment to talk about whatever is on their mind in the NFT space. So we're going to do that. Uh, we'll start with Tyler here. Give us 30 seconds of whatever you got going on. It could be a project, anything. Oh, well, a trend I'm watching is AI art. And we've got Claire Silver in the Louvre this week. That's the big headline. People want to trade that news. We've seen brain drops surge over 100%. Bike gans from Pender Van Armen are on the move. Life in West America back to a double-digit floor. Claire's Genesis up at 24 ETH. So this is a major ecosystem to watch and one I'm going to be paying a lot of attention to. Logan? Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the rise of clay NFTs during the last week. Um, so uh, congrats and hat tip to Claynosaurus over on Seoul. Um, I'm not going to waste 30 seconds for fear of my uh, internet connection, but go clay NFTs. I, I love the Claynosaurus. They have a great social account. So shout out, shout out to the Claynos. Jason. Yeah. So the one thing that I was thinking about is r related to AI art and Claire Silver's recent announcement also. And I actually think that obviously museums are going to start accepting AI art and that AI art is going to become the next trend in art and art museums don't really hold back from trends. And of course, you know, these things are going to become like every museum is going to have a crypto punk at some point in time. Every museum is going to have AI art at some point in time. But I think what's more interesting is how exactly these museums start to use interactive digital experience to create personalized 3D works of art. And I think that's going to be like a massive selling point for museums. You have to create something similar to movie theaters currently. They're struggling because the experience sucks. I can do it at home on my TV. I can view art at home from the MetaQuest. Like it has to be better than me putting on a 3D headset. And um, I'm curious how museums are going to adapt to that. Great, great content there. Um, and if you guys like this content, um, what we talked about today, we, like I said, we do the NFT roundtable uh, post every Wednesday or Thursday. Um, we just put out the the one for today. So we got three other questions in there in addition to the Bitcoin one, which we talked about here. So check that out on luckytrader.com if you haven't already. Um, and we'll be back next week. Um, I guess my, my closing thoughts uh, for my 30 seconds, I'm not gonna take up the whole 30 seconds, but I'm still vibing with my checks and Jack Butcher. Um, Anxiously awaiting to see what he does with Opepins. Um, and uh, they recently put out the lineage where you could see what was burnt to make the uh, the higher level ones. And it's it's very cool to see. So continuing to be vibing with those um, and still a Jack Butcher Maxi for the time being here. Um, but that's our show. Uh, please like, subscribe, and uh, we'll, we'll see you next Wednesday. Uh, for Jason, for Tyler, for Logan, uh, I'm Ghost, and we will see you later. Yeah.